Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Well, welcome everyone to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. I'm your host, Jane Atkinson. Today, I'd like to talk to you about building the business of your dreams, operative word, your, because not everybody in this business wants to build it exactly the same. And I'm so excited that we have Dan Miller on the line with us. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Jane. Excited to be with you. Well, Dan, your your book, the title of your book, uh, 48 Days to the Work You Love, operative word, you love, the one, is perfect for this. Tell us a little bit about the premise of that book and how, you, how that kind of got a lot of things rolling for you. All right, sure. Well, you're, you're right to zero in on that term, your work, that, you know, work that you love there, because I think everybody has the opportunity to do that. Sometimes I'm questioning that. Well, wow, if everybody did work they love, you know, who would deliver the mail or who would pick up the garbage? But you know what? There are people who love doing those kind of things. There really is somebody who loves doing virtually anything we can come up with. But I I was raised in kind of a theological environment, my dad being a pastor of a little church, that we just get through this life here, kind of eke through it, don't screw up too bad, and then we go to heaven. But there was no (laughs) emphasis at all on really enjoying our time here. Well, as I read the scripture and did a lot of personal study and was interested in personal growth, you know, I discovered that, wow, this is the time for us to really maximize using the talents that we have, the gifts, the unique gifts that we have, what we call your unique ability. And that ought to have that ought to have some kind of application on Monday morning, not just something you think about, not just something you do on the weekends, but what do you do Monday morning? So I think that everybody has the opportunity to put legs on their unique message and to do work that they love. I love it. I love it. Now, um, you were this poor farm kid. This, these are your words, not mine. Uh, <laughs> how, how did you kind of get the confidence to ever stand in front of an audience? <laughs> I was raised also, Jane, to stay behind the scenes. Drawing attention to yourself was a real no-no. I mean, the Bible tells us pride goes before the fall. Mm. And to stand up and think that people ought to pay attention to you is a very dangerous, prideful kind of thing. Mm. Well, (laughs) when I was about 13 years old, somehow I got a hold of the little audio recording by Earl Nightingale called The Strangest Secret. Mm -hmm. Here's this gravely voiced old man saying, we become what we think about. And I thought, is there really an opportunity for me as a poor farm kid in Ohio to do more, have more, see more, go more than what my life seems to kind of indicate I'm going in, what direction I'm going in? And that became a real foundational principle for me and remains so today. We become what we think about. And so I started getting access to the old Horatio Alger stories and stories about people who went from nothing to really having a life of their dreams. Right. And I thought, if, I re- if that principle is really true, we become what we think about, I'm going to think about myself in those terms. And it's just simply opened doors for me that go- went beyond what I could have even envisioned way back then as a farm kid. Oh, I love it. And I'm doing this, this whole first quarter of 2019 for me is all about this mindset work in order to step into this next place and in, in my own business and always financially included. And it's really interesting how so much of the teaching that I was into when I was 25 years old, Earl Nightingale and all that, it's starting to come back around again. I, I believe they have all those recordings on Audible now. And uh, we should put a link to Audible in the show notes and see if we can find those, Monica. Uh, because I really think that it's it's all still, it all still holds so much water, don't you think, Dan? Oh, those, those are timeless principles. Really? It, it doesn't have to be something that somebody just thought up, you know, in 2019. Right. I love those old classics and listen to those old masters of achievement. You know, mm-hmm. people like Dennis Waitley and Norman Vincent yep. Peale and Napoleon Hill. Yeah. If they could grow rich. Those things are just classic principles that still work today. Yeah. 
They really are. Well, um, so eventually, okay, so you figured out your confidence through uh, listening to some things that were positive influences, but eventually someone said, I will hand you a paycheck. Talk about the moment when you actually began to charge for speaking. The first thing that would really be in that space that's a real vivid memory is when I decided to go back to graduate school and get my master's in clinical psychology Mm -hmm. as part of the deal. I had been out of school for four years and I had had some pretty unique experiences in there. So I was recruited by several graduate schools and offered a graduate teaching assistantship. So there you go. I was going to get my tuition for free by teaching a couple sections of psychology 101. Well, I was terrified. I mean, I I literally, on my way to the class, I would stop at the restroom to be sick (laughs) because I was so torn up. But I knew that if I pushed myself through that, it would lead to other things. So it was in that environment. I was teaching in exchange for tuition, teaching psychology 101. And I started to get more comfortable with walking in in front of a group. And then I took the Dale Carnegie human relations course. Right. Again, practicing, getting two minutes to talk about something where you've earned the right to talk about it. So you talking to, and of course, a very valuable speaker principle. You don't just talk because you have good ability to talk. You talk about, you have a message to deliver, something Mm -hmm. you're so passionate about, you can't contain it. And so in that Dale Carnegie program, I learned how to do that. And then I became friends with the guy who was leading the course. And so I continued working with him as an assistant for several years. And so I get to work with other people, helping them craft their message and deliver it with confidence. And over that period of time, to move from that little poor, shy, Mennonite farm kid to somebody who was comfortable walking in in front of audiences. It was a long process, but one that I took very seriously to craft it, to study it, to learn how to do it well. Right, right. You filled in a big blank for us there with uh, when you said Mennonite farm kid, because that really means something different than other um than other religions. So that went, oh, okay, now I see where the whole never ever shine brighter than anybody else came from. Okay, that's really That's good. exactly right. Okay, okay. So you and I met, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or some number of years ago, maybe, I don't remember when, and you were thinking about, okay, I want to expand my speaking business but then you started to move down the path and tell us what you discovered. I enrolled in your course because I wanted to, you know, the, your high level course, because I wanted to learn how to do this really well. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, if I spoke boy, a couple times a week, I mean, that would be pretty cool to have that be part of what I did. However, I was one of those, and I've always I've joked with you that I'm not sure I was an ideal student because in going through that, it gave me tremendous clarity, and the clarity included the fact I didn't want to be on airports, in airports and hotels, mm-hmm. a big part of the time. I wanted to be very, very careful about what I committed to, and I wanted to learn ways, and it prompted me. What it did, Jane, it prompted me to learn how can I leverage my message without having to do just the one thing that typical speakers think they have to do, that being in another city, on stage somewhere. But it drove me to be more creative and how can I share my message without having to leave my home? And and the moment you arrived at on my scene, you already had a massive following. 48 Days was already a, a big community and you were, so, so give us a snapshot of the business model that you had in that moment and then let's talk about what, how you decided to leverage speaking instead of doing the traditional path. And by the way, you're not, not my ideal client because I loved <laughs> that you came to that. It, it really helped me go, yes, of course, there's not only one way to do this. Not everybody wants the same things. And I've always tried to be uh, not one that says this is the only way to go. So you just totally verified that. Uh, well, thank you. Well, I, I have been fortunate in 
being an author and being an author was something that kind of evolved. It wasn't something that I sat down and said, I want to be an author, but uh, my wife and I were teaching a Sunday school class and it, the class just grew and grew and grew. We were teaching on career life transitions, these inevitable translations that people go through. And we were drawing people, not just the kid who was working at Burger King and wondering how he could get a job at Amazon. We were bringing in engineers and dentists and psychiatrist, you know, physicians, attorneys, people like that who were saying, gee, yeah, people think I'm doing pretty well, but I'm not sure I'm on the right path. Well, because that Sunday school class was so popular, we moved it to a Monday night and I did it for eight years just as a free community seminar. And that exploded my business in speaking to people who really wanted more, wanted a better fit in the work that they were doing. Mm. So I was already doing those weekly seminars, I was doing personal coaching. We were training other coaches to be coaches. We were training people to leverage their books because of the success I had had with 48 Days to the Work You Love. So we were doing live events, a lot of ancillary products, courses that went along with the books. So I was already in that space where I was seeing a lot of opportunities to leverage my message. Speaking then fit nicely in that, right. but it relieved from me the pressure of having speaking be the primary focus of my income generation. Yes, it's a wonderful, beautiful addition. I love it. But with having other things there, it it embraces my model of not having to be away from home a great deal of time. Right. And I love that model personally because I am someone who really only wants to speak two or three times a year. So let's fast forward to today mm -hmm. where you have this massive business built. You bring people to you for your live events. And I want you to talk about that. Um, but what is your goal? What would you like to see? Uh, how many speeches per year and what, what types of audiences? Well, that, that what you just added there is a critical part of that as well. I look to have five or six critically chosen speaking engagements a year. Mm -hmm. Cherry picked. Cherry picked. Yes. Now, here's an example. Okay. I spoke at a conference called Igniting Souls up in Columbus, Ohio, just back in October. It was 450 authors, primarily new authors. Oh, okay. That sounds juicy. Yes. And <laughs> in speaking there, now I, I got a modest fee for that, mm -hmm. but the primary reason for me doing that is because every single person sitting in the seat is a candidate for all the other things that I do. Right. Here's a, I was just at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful conference, really well orchestrated. And I got zero for speaking there. Now they paid for my hotel and flight, but zero speaking fee. Why would I do that? Because I can guarantee you that speaking there will add $50,000 to my income this year because those people are candidates for the live events that we do, for the other background products that we have, for personal coaching that I have, for my mastermind, for my online community. So having those things in place is what gives me a robust business and opportunities to create income that don't come directly from my speaking, but come indirectly. So I would rather get nothing and speak in front of an audience where the audience are candidates for the other things I do than to go into an unrelated industry and give a 45 minute keynote. So a target rich audience is your goal and the fee becomes less important when there's a big payday at the end of it. And uh, like you said, putting adding $50,000. So let's say they won't pay your ten or $15,000 fee, but they're going to give you an opportunity to make 50. That makes sense to me that you would. Now we talk a lot about standing tall in our fees. And when you are doing this, full time and you don't have a whole host of other products that can help this pay off, then you might look at that a little bit differently. So just know that we're not necessarily saying speak for free. Every audience is going to tell you 
oh, it's going to be great exposure, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. That doesn't oh, mean yeah. necessarily, unless you have the back end built out like Dan does, that does not mean that it's going to pay off for you in the same way. Would I do ASAE for free? Yep. MPI, MDRT, you know, some of the big, some of the big ones that we consider the show for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and with that too, you may, People would say, well, it just gives you good exposure. Well, I could make a justification for paying $2,000 a month to have a billboard here in Nashville, Tennessee. Right. Because it's going to build my brand. Right. I have zero confidence in that having that kind of return value. Yeah. So, and so you're really, really uh, hyper focused on your target market. Who are the people that you want to bring into the funnel? Now, I'm right. going to ask you some questions that I just want to know the answers to because right. we have models that aren't different from each other. Um, you know, and so I'm getting more and more focused on making sure that people don't get confused about how to begin. How, how, what is your goal? When people sit in your audience, there's 400 people or 1,000 people, what is your goal for them to do first? In terms of engaging with me where I make, yes. make money? Yes, where would you like them to go? Okay. To get involved a, with you. We have an online community mm -hmm. called the 48 Days Eagles. So it's a very easy point of entry. Okay. I, I want to have a funnel for people to move through. So I don't just say, well, you can coach with me, you know, it's $7,500. Right. No, uh, th there may be too big of a barrier to go from just meeting me Zero. to that. But right. if I give somebody, hey, this is $36 a month. This is a great way to connect with other people who are on the same path as you are. And so people come in there, then they're exposed to other things. Oh, gee, Dan has a course. Right. It's $297. Well, I want that. So I get, I take that. So wow. you're gradually going. First Absolutely. you start at zero. No, first you they get to know you. They see you for free. Then they pay thirty six dollars. Then you go up to two forty nine. Did you say? I use two ninety seven as two ninety seven. Uh -huh. Then we go on to the next price point, and I think moving people up the pro price points very gradually. For those of you who are doing online courses, this is a good path to follow, and it's obviously working for you, Dan. Well, and I have people who are in my personal mastermind. I mean, that's the highest level of connection to me. I share life with those people. They're dear, intimate, close friends, but they're in my mastermind. Now, there's only 40 people in there, so it's a, it's a small group, right. and it's, it's not open. I never promote that even to my own audience. But those are people who never start there. Those are people that I've had a relationship with, some of them for eight or 10 years, Wow, a very long period of time where they've been involved in different things. And now they're in that group. That's $500 a month. So that's $6,000 a year. And I have people who have been in there for five years. Wow. So that's people. really cool to see yeah. how your progress um, goes. So when you meet with your people, okay, so now let's talk about working at home. How beautiful is it that almost everything that you do brings them to you? If, they, if you build it, they will come. They have come. <laughs> Let's talk about, um, you know, your, the way your day might be structured. Is your, stru is your day like popping into each of these groups? What does is, what is your day look like? And then let's talk about your live events. All right, sure. My, my week is structured in this way. On Monday, I have all my business events, any kind of business communication with the rest of my team. And again, all virtual. I mean, no right. in-person at all. You're using Zoom a lot. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, you turned me on to that little beautiful little more button that actually made you go live on Facebook, which I did not know you could go straight <laughs> from Zoom. And I, I love know. the touch up my appearance feature in Zoom so much that I hate Facebook Live. And so you, t uh, when I was on your group, you gave me a beautiful little hack there that I've been using ever since. So thank you for that, Dan. All right. Wonderful. So Monday, is it internal team or is it also people, is it just internally your meeting well, with people? Well, my, I, we have seven on our team and okay. they're around the country. So okay. they're experts in a particular area. So that's when we meet together. And really, I have a very short meeting with those people. My real meeting is with my daughter, who's my liaison to everybody else. Beautiful. So I have a focused meeting with her on Monday. And then also on Monday, 
I have the Monday mentor meeting in the 40 Days Eagles community. Okay. Tuesdays, I continue with any personal coaching. That's when I connect with my mastermind, have a live call there. So those, all my meetings are on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Wednesday morning, I record my podcast. Mm -hmm. Wednesday afternoon is when I do interviews like this. Wednesday afternoon is when I do interviews. Mm -hmm. Thursday and Friday are reserved for what I call deep work. That's when I am totally unavailable, no appointments scheduled. That's when I work on big projects know, upcoming courses or new manuscripts that I'm working on. That's when I work on those. If we do live events, and those are very rare, then those are Thursday and Friday. Okay. The reason I do those Thursday, Friday, it would make more sense to have people be able to come if we did them like Saturday and Sunday. But no, I want Saturdays and Sundays to be totally quiet, Sa sacred, sacred restoration okay. you know, days for me. So there, our events are always on Thursday and Friday. Okay, so I want everybody to hear this, Wealthy Speaker listeners, uh, building the business of your dreams, emphasis on your, means that you may be structuring it, not perfect for all of your clients who po probably have, some of them have jobs and would like to come on Saturday and Sunday, but you have really trained people of what to expect from you, Dan, and I bet they still come anyway. I bet they still make it work because they want to be a part of things that you're doing. And so I think that people can adopt around you, don't you think? Totally. And I, I think it's a real danger to try to make yourself what everybody else expect you to be. Even in our online community, where we know that about 80% of the people there still do have traditional jobs, our online calls are at two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. So those people, may, it may be a stretch. They may have to shuffle to take a lunch break during that time mm -hmm. or just listen to a replay. Right. Now, it would be a lot and, more convenient if we And they do it. it. They do it. Absolutely. Right. If it's important to them, they yeah. do it. One time, one of my coaches said to me, Jane, don't baby your clients. Mm. And I was talking about having an event in Canada. And a lot of my clients are American. And I'm like, will they cross the border? Won't they cross the border? She said, Jane, don't baby your clients. And so uh, we did it and it was very successful and it worked out just fine. So I think you are uh, a living, uh, breathing, uh, someone who has proven that strategy over and over again. So I love the way that you dedicate your day. How important are those Thursdays and Fridays? They're time to think. You're scheduling literally time to think in your business for Thursdays and Fridays. And that may, maybe that takes you into the weekend. I don't know if you turn your brain off on the weekend or how that works, but how important is that to you? Very, very critically important. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that time scheduled and that's not where I'm actively engaged or actively generating income, but if you think about it, that's where I have the opportunity to create things that are going to be making money for me next year right. or five years from now. Right. And without those, then things are going to dry up. So that's where new things are being created. But I, I can't be dependent on the things that create income for me. It, it's just like as a speaker, if you are going to just be out there speaking, you're funnel is going to dry up. There has to be time dedicated to marketing, to do the things, however mm -hmm. you're feeling, doing that, generating the new opportunities coming in. Right. Had, had a guy who I, I just talked to, he was a client of mine about 10 years ago and he wanted to be a magician. Well, he was doing birthday parties for kids, you know, getting paid a hundred bucks or whatever. And I said, geez, they can't make a living doing that. He says, I know. What am I supposed to do? I said, you got to find an audience that understands the value of what you're doing and are willing to write the checks that make your time worthwhile. So we moved him to corporate in product introductions. Mm -hmm. He now gets $15,000 a day and stays booked as much as he wants to. It's amazing Beautiful. what's happened. But he said, here's what people don't know about me, Dan. He said, that first month when you talked to me about that, that first month I spent eight hours a day calling to book myself. I got three engagements. The next month, I got 23. Wow. But see, a lot of people 
think, oh my gosh, you know, spending eight hours a day to call and get me. I don't want to do that. That's too much work. And so they right. somehow think they're going to jump to success without doing the work. So I have to do things that are priming the pump for where I'm going to be three years from now. Right. And, and producing thought leadership and different ideas out there into the market. What I've been thinking about lately is the idea that mindset has to meet tactics. Okay, you may have all the tactics in the world to go and get yourself booked, but the first sale is to yourself. So if you don't really truly see yourself as a $15,000 speaker and that's what you want to be charging, that's the work you need to be doing first. Absolutely. That well, Earl that... Nightingale, way we're circling back to a good old Earl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We become what we think about. And if you can't see yourself as a $15,000 speaker, nobody else is going to. Right. We really have to do that work first. So I think mindset and tactics and, you know, doing that work that you talked about, the heavy lifting, the picking up the phone, the reaching out to people on emails, that needs to come also. But you have to have that foundation of belief that you can go where it is that you want to go. Absolutely. So, okay, let's talk about, first of all, I want to circle back to the fact that your daughter works with you in the business. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. And here's the thing, Jane, she is my gold standard for anybody else. And it's not just because I'm biased as a daddy. She is that good. Anybody we bring on our team, I measure them against Ashley to see how can they even compare to her? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. Now, I, don't, I know that's not going to be true for everybody. I mean, I have two sons as well right. where we've done some things together, but I would never have them in that kind of a critical role. It would not work. Right. They just but, aren't. And it's not everybody's designed or interested, even interested in our business. You know, right. a lot of people don't even understand our business, Dan. Yeah. So the I, fact I, that I Ashley it, understands it and now – practically probably runs it for you is brilliant. And I know a lot of people that might be planting a seed with them. Mm -hmm, maybe I could be grooming one of my kids. Yeah. I don't think it's common to have a family member, a child or a spouse that works that well. So I, I certainly don't even recommend it, but with her, <laughs> she was, she was working with me when I would speak and she was 12 years old. I'd have her handing out brochures and flyers. Wow. And, and then she became really interested in the disc profile. Mm -hmm. And so that was a part of my presentation, understanding yourself so you can have work that you love is to know yourself well. Right. She became an expert in disc. And I just brought her in as an expert, even when she was 16, 17 years old. Well, then she went to college, went to the University of Tennessee, got her degree. I'm like, okay, you know, now goodbye. Nice having you. Now you're going to go on with your, she says, right. no, I, I want to work with you. And I said, you're kidding me. Don't you want to go do something? No, I want to do this. Uh, well, now, and now it's interesting too, Jane, because my daughter is, she and her family are full-time travelers. They live on the road really? all the time. They are full-time travelers. They've been in all 48 states and they travel all the time. They're one of those families. But because I understand her so well. She understands me and the needs of our business. We've created it in a way that she can do that. So she's on the road. She's that's, never in one place for a long time. That's amazing. And technology allows us to do something like that, which is so amazing. Do they travel around in a motorhome? They do. Well, they have a trailer. They have a big Dodge mega cab truck. Oh, and my And then gosh. A, a 32 foot trailer behind that. But so they, they stop, you know, she knows that on Mondays and Tuesdays, she has high tech access. Mm -hmm. So she's on the zoom calls. She leads our community calls. She does all those things and nobody is any the wiser for where <laughs> she happens to be at that particular time. That is awesome. I love that. And I love it for her kids because they're getting an experience of a lifetime and likely an education of a lifetime. Uh, traveling the world with them. And I have a few clients who are doing that as well. Uh, right now. That's yeah, so you, cool. asked, you asked those granddaughters of mine, you know, 
who's your teacher? Everyone. Yeah. You know, where you go to school? Everywhere. Everywhere and everyone. <laughs> that is fantastic. I love it. Well, uh, there's a lot of pieces of your puzzle that are very intriguing to me. And I wonder if you have felt this as well as I have. Have you noticed um, that maybe you're not as hyper-focused on but maybe you aren't because I, I know you're such a development person. I'm more de- I'm more focused on courses right now than I am on books. Tell me about your course experience and what you love writing the most. All right. I love writing is my first love. Yes. There's nothing that makes me happier. And when I have those Thursdays and Fridays set aside for deep work, it's almost like, you know, getting the dessert after you've eaten your green beans and broccoli. <laughs> I, I, it's like, yes, that's my reward for getting those other things out of the way. So that's I love awesome. writing. But I, I write about helping people really find their core competencies, their mm-hmm. deepest passions, and then how to translate those into meaningful, purposeful, and profitable work. So that's my writing space that continues regardless. Um, you, I, I forgot how you asked me that. Talk about the, the courses. The I'm curious oh, to yeah, know yeah, yeah. if yes. you love writing, like putting together a course, or if you'd rather publish a book because yeah. you kind of have been there and done that. You know that. But do you love yeah. courses as much as I do? I do. I do. And here, here's why. I mean, I love both of those. I love books and the, the thrill of having something that's selling well. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, there, there's, that's always a thrill. But in terms of a business model, here's a good example. I have a course on how to create your own mastermind. Mm-hmm. So if let, let's just use this as an example. If I do that as a book, and I could easily do that, so how to create your own mastermind. So I get that out there with a the publisher, right? And I get a typical kind of royalty, and so I'm going to get a dollar fifty cents every time a book sells, and we sell ten thousand copies of that. Mm-hmm. All right, that's fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Now a publisher would consider that pretty good success. Exactly. Yeah, that's way above the average numbers for a book to sell 15,000. That would be great. I get $15,000. All right. And that's okay, but it's uh, not going to be something I can live on. Obviously I'm going to be scrambling. Right. If I take that same material content together as a course, Mm -hmm. then it has a different kind of feel. So we do a little bit of video. There may be a third the content that would be in a book right even less so usually way less content Mm -hmm. in a course that you'd go through in a couple hours but now we've got something that feels different so we charge 48 dollars for that okay so i did a course on how to create your own mastermind so we put that out there it is 48 Mm dollars so again we're looking for you know not the numbers that's going to make you a, a new york times bestseller you know we're not looking for 200,000 or a million copies if i only get 10,000 people to purchase that course. Right. Low numbers, but all of a sudden at $48, that's half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's why turning content into courses is so stinking appealing to me. Right, right. This morning, my daughter and I just working together on this, we've identified three courses that we want to complete in the next 30 days. Wow. They're going to be short, We've already got the content. All I need to do is just shoot the video, put together the worksheets. We'll have those ready to go. And usually those we have at like $97. Mm-hmm. 48 would be a low price point, but $97 right. is a pretty common landing point for us. And again, having the credibility of having an audience who's already following you. See, that's where having a book that's out there is wonderful. It's like we were talking about speaking and maybe not being paid directly, but being paid after the fact. Same mm-hmm. thing is true. I have a book that's in multiple languages and all around the world. What I want it to do is I want it to lead people to the 40 days community and other things they can access there. So if I have a book that is around the world and it's led people to the 40 days site, and now they see a course that they can purchase for $97, 
that's where things get really interesting. Easy entry. Okay. Uh, I want to give some advice to people who have thought about, they, you know, maybe they've been out on the road seven, eight times a month and they're getting tired of the road warrior stuff and they want to develop a course. And I've heard lots and lots of people say this to me. Uh, I would like to develop some more passive income. What do you think some of the mistakes or pitfalls people might make with that are? In assuming, just like a book, that if you do something that's really high value in terms of content, mm-hmm. that you're finished, that somehow people are going to, I mean, that's, it's this. That's when the work begins is when yeah. you have it in the can, right? The, the guy who I just talked about as being a magician, he mm-hmm. said, people have to recognize this is 10% show and 90% business. We talk about show business and think, wow, you can wow people on this. Yes, you can. But even with where he is, the success that he has now, he considers it 10% being show and 90% business. Okay. Same thing is true here. I mean, Mark Victor Hansen, co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, told me years ago, he said, Dan, everybody wants to write a book. He says, what I tell them is write a book, do a really good job. Now you're 10% finished. Right. 90% is how you can. So the same thing is true when we talk about courses. Do a great course, but 90% of your work is how are you going to let people know about that? What are you going to do in the marketing space to get people access to that? Right, right. And if you've been out speaking for a long period of time, how are you pulling people from that audience into your fan base so that they will be there and the pump will be primed when you unveil this beautiful product? And that's part of the, you know, I think people are collecting business cards or doing something to gather email addresses, but then they're not doing anything. The trail runs cold. Uh, Do you have a process when you go out to speak your five and six times a year for making sure that people come into your world? I always, always, always have some kind of a lead magnet. Yeah. Now, as, as you know, you know, a professional speaker doesn't get on stage and then sell other things that they have. Necessarily, but, no. Yes. But if there is a book, it should lead to something else. If you can give people an ebook, it leads to something else. Yeah. You know, I have, I have uh, examples of how you can leverage your message. So I have lead magnets like 48days.com slash speak. It'll go there in order to put people in a nurture marketing sequence. I have one we just started, uh, 48days.com slash author. Well, gee, you have an idea for a book? Man, we want to encourage you on that. Okay. Start giving that person free information. And I want to put these. Uh, I want to put these links in the show notes, actually, because people may be interested in in becoming a part of your world, Dan. So, do you think the speak forty uh, eight days dot dot com dot com forward slash speak? Do you speak? think that's the best one? Yes. Okay. Yes. As a matter of fact, Great. it is for what we're talking about here. Absolutely. Right. And let's also mention the name of your podcast. Podcast is forty eight days. All right. 48 days podcast and 48 days.com forward slash speak. If you would like to know more about Dan, well, Dan, I appreciate what you bring to the table so much because this is, uh, you truly are building the business of your dreams and you have this beautiful farm where people come to every once in a while for uh, live events. I mean, you, you truly are walking this talk. Um, anything else that we should share with people about truly doing this for yourself? No, I just, I want to encourage people to be creative in how they view it. People tend to get so micro focused on what it is that they do. I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I'm a coach. Well, that's Mm. wonderful, but those things ought to have soft edges so that we see opportunities that allow us to expand in those areas without having to just make one thing our only thing. Yeah. So I just just love the opportunities like this just to encourage people for how they can expand. Well, thank you for encouraging our wealthy speaker listeners, Dan Miller. We appreciate you coming on the show today. And if you, wealthy speaker listeners, have in- enjoyed this podcast, please go out to iTunes, leave us a rating and a review, and make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any future content that we have coming your way. With that, we will say, see you soon, wealthy speakers. Bye for now, everyone. 
Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Speaker Show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free Wealthy Speaker audit and visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, Wealthy Speakers.